Good morning everyone. So today it's uh, it's nice and cold and uh, in this video I thought I would uh, show you what it's like to defrost the car from a cold start in the morning. I think it's about zero degrees, maybe minus one, so not cold by Scandinavian standards, but for the south of England that's pretty cold. Um, and then I'm going to go and try out the uh, BP Pulse, which used to be known as Polar. I'm going to try one of their 50 kilowatt chargers close by and uh, see what it's like to charge the car when it's really cold. It's, uh, it's only like a 10 minute drive, so there's not really going to be much time for the battery to heat up so it'd be a good a good indication of 50 kilowatt charging on a really cold uh, cold day all right so um yeah let's uh first have a look at the car so there's a reasonable amount of ice yeah it's a fair bit on the i mean it's not a lot but but enough to to need to be scraped off so one thing that's interesting to see is what the f the um little charging flap is like when it's iced up so let's have a look Can, will it open uh yeah it does open it's not too badly iced around there which is good but um i think it might get a bit sticky around the edges which could be a bit annoying but other than that uh let's see what's like opening the doors yeah the doors haven't really frozen so i think you need quite a bit of thick ice if you were gonna get any uh sticking on the doors um but you can see it's quite a lot on the roof there but yeah doors open and close fine so let's hop in and um we will uh get the car preconditioning okay so i'm sat in the car now and uh, yeah it's freezing it shows minus one on the on the display so yeah that's pretty cold for uh, for the south of england in sussex and uh yeah so let's get the car preconditioning and uh, we're going to set a timer to see how long it takes for the ice to melt off so the preconditioning if you're not already familiar with this uh can be selected by going to the air conditioning setting over here and at the top you've got parking under parking there's a start preheating and cooling button and uh, yeah there's also a schedule up here which is really cool you can schedule the preconditioning on the car um, but it doesn't always work i found so uh yeah sometimes it can be a little inconsistent and that's annoying so i think loads of people have reported that to polestar hopefully they'll get that fixed soon so yeah it's 8 50 and we're just going to have a look at how long it takes for the ice to melt off on the car literally it's seconds and already the ice has started to melt on the back so yeah i know most cars are like this but it's really effective the ice has come away very very quickly and uh, let's see what's happening in the front okay so i i stepped straight out the car about one minute has gone by and you can already see that um the front of the window is starting to melt so it is now 8 52 and um just two minutes has gone by and the front window is almost completely clear. So for me, this is one of those interesting things, like a couple of cars I've had before have had heated windshields, which you can see the, the filament strands, so like the Mitsubishi Outland has that, and the heated windshield is very, very quick and effective. However, there's no heated windshield on the Polestar, but it doesn't matter because the, the front window will clear so quickly. That took about, about two to three minutes. And okay, yeah, it was only a small amount of ice, but if, if there was thicker ice, you'd probably be scraping it anyway, but this is an indication of just how effective and how quick the heater is in the Polestar to to melt any residual ice from the front window. And uh, it's, it's as quick, I think, as um, built-in windshield heating. Okay, so inside the car, we're at uh, 8.53 now, and the inside of the car is already surprisingly warm. Um, it, it really does heat up very quickly. So the only part that hasn't started to melt is the, uh, the roof and that of course is going to take a lot longer because there's no direct heat so um, that's just going to warm up from natural heat inside the car but the front windshield here have a look at this from the pos position of being directly inside the car is now completely clean and that is at 8.53 so two to three minutes for the front ice to melt off and yeah we've still got a little bit of tiny bit of ice on the on the side windows but already the inside of the car is getting quite warm and that seems to have melted off so yeah i'm gonna head off now and we'll go and try out this uh bp pulse charger and see what it's like charging the car at cold temperatures So have a look at the uh, power limitation at the moment. So one degree outside, 
25% state to charge and our power limit there in the grayed out section is, I don't know, that's probably 25% maybe, maybe more, maybe 30% or so, hard to know. But that's a significant limitation in the amount of power that is available to us. Now obviously a low state of charge does cause that to occur, but um, the temperature is a big factor as well. So with it being as cold as this, it really does limit quite early. I've seen it start to limit as early as 45%, which is kind of annoying actually, because that's that's a big power limit. I mean, it's not gonna significantly affect your ability to drive, but it, yeah, it's, it's something to be aware of. I guess if you live in a really cold country, like you know Scandinavian countries, uh, or if you have a garage here in the UK, you could keep it in a garage and uh, warm it up a little bit if you wanted to try and avoid that kind of situation from happening. But yeah, it does, uh, it does significantly limit the power when you have a fairly low state of charge as well as a low temperature. So we've arrived here at this uh, BP pulse point and 22% uh, battery charge we've got, a uh, range of 45 miles it's saying. So let's get out and start the charge and see what it's like. Temperature on the display says zero degrees. So here we go, let's um, walk around to this side. So this is the first time I've used this, uh, this pulse system and uh, it still says polar on it. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's now an app on the phone. So if you have a look at this, this is the, um, this is the BP Pulse app. And you now have to get yourself set up on, on this app in order to get your charges working. Or you can, I think, still use the RFID card. But I'm gonna try and use the, uh, the app system. So let's have a look at that. So um, on the app here, I'm gonna select the location I'm at, Red Lion. Okay, yeah, I'm at the Red Lion. So if I click on that, it has the option here to use this pulse point. So 24646, enter the BP pulse point ID to start. Um, where do I, okay, let's go continue, why not? Uh, and we want CCS, yes, yeah, like the CCS socket. Uh, make sure your vehicle is connected to the pulse 24646. Don't forget when using, okay, some stuff down there. Overstay fees. All right, let's start charge. Okay, so connecting. I'll put my phone down over here and uh, see if it'll stay. And uh, yeah, there we go. So that works. Look, welcome my name. And uh, we can select the CCS side. So I just picked up the cable and it knows that I've selected that. And uh, oh, I always forget to remove this little plug. Um, take that out bit of ice in there actually Let's see if it plugs in anyway and uh, pop this plug into place there we go so it says safety checks are being carried out and uh, something to be aware of some charge you have to hold this for a while especially if it's got a heavy cable or if it's twisted because uh, it struggles to create the handshake correctly if uh, there's some resistance on the cable that's pulling it down and uh, yeah so it says safety check okay and uh, there we are, charging. So starting at 22%, uh, elapsed time of five seconds, and we'll see how, how it progresses. So that is a, that I have to say is a really easy experience. Um, it's the first time I've used this app. Normally I use the RFID card, but um, it's really nice having this app and being able to just activate the charge from my phone without having to carry an RFID card around. The other thing that's really good about it, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is, um, what they really want or intend. I don't think it really matters, but you could, it means you can, I suppose, use, you don't have to carry your RFID. So basically what I'm trying to say is if you've got two electric cars, you can have potentially one account and you might be able to share that between two users by having the app and the same login on two different phones. It might just make it a little bit easier than thinking, oh, I forgot to bring the RFID card and having to order multiple cards and perhaps forgetting those. So I like the app system. This particular charger has, um, uh, display board here and I've heard of people getting caught out with this you've got to be a bit careful but outside pub opening hours you've got to text this code to make sure you don't end up with a ticket um, and during the pub hours you register in inside but um, you've got to remember to do that I think because otherwise there's a risk you end up with a with a ticket which you really don't want but the point here is that a lot of these places you don't necessarily um, have to be using these during opening hours of the restaurant. You could use them in the night you know these are available for people to use um, but you just do have to do the text thing 
Okay, so we're coming up to about 11 minutes and we've got just over, yeah, 6.9, maybe seven kilowatt hours delivered to the car so far. So let's assume it's gonna click over to seven and that's gonna happen over 11 minutes. So seven divided by 11 times 60 and we get 38. So that's 38 kilowatts. Now this is obviously a 50 kilowatt charger. So delivering 38. Now the question here is, is that the car that's limiting that or is that the uh, this particular polar unit? Now it's really hard to know. Last time I used this, we were doing really well. We were getting about 48 and uh, that was when the temperature was a bit warmer. Um, but this time we're getting 38. So that would lead me to think that it probably is the car and the cold temperature that's causing that to slow down more than it should do. So you can see here on the display, it's showing 92 miles per hour. Um, but let's try and turn the climate on because basically I've been charging up to this point with the climate off and let's see how that affects the charging speed on the display. So uh, I'm going to put the climate back into auto and I set 20 degrees down here and uh, let's see what that does to the charging speed. So it's now saying 93. Um, it hasn't reduced it, so that's interesting to see. Pretty sure that on some of my other videos, I, I did see quite a big change when I uh, turned on the, the heat. So that, that's cool. That, uh, and in fact, maybe what that is indicating, perhaps, I'm just speculating here, is that uh, the pump, the pump, call it a pump, the electrical supply unit is able to supply more energy, but the battery is not able to take on more than what it is at the moment due to the cold temperature. So by turning on the, the heat is not going to reduce your charging speed. And it may be that in the previous videos that I did where it did reduce the charging speed, that that was because the electrical supply unit was supplying as much as it possibly could and the car was taking on as much as it could. So by turning on the heat, it was then taking away energy that could go into the battery and using that for heating instead. Um, so that's quite interesting to see that, yeah, if you are suffering from slow charging speeds due to uh, the cold temperatures from the battery, then obviously having your heating on in the car isn't going to to reduce that further. That's just gonna utilize more energy from the supply unit. We're approaching 40% now and the charging speed has started to increase. So if you look at the display here, look, you can see that, yeah, we've got 102 now miles per hour. And uh, again, I'm going to calculate this from the, um, from the electrical supply unit, but 100 and say 104 divided by what we said earlier, 2.4, that would indicate 43 kilowatts. So probably now the battery is starting to heat up a little bit and uh, we're starting to see a better charging rate. Um, and yeah, you can see at the top there, it says completes at 1131. On the Polestar, if you have one or you're wondering how this works, if you um, go to the charging page, uh, which is here, and uh, if you select a different number, so let's say 80%, because we're not really gonna to wanna to charge up to a full 100% here. 80% will now bring that time back down to, that says 1016, so it's 930. So that estimates in 45 minutes, we're gonna go from 40% up to 80%. And that will change depending on what you set it to. So if you, if you think, okay, well, I just wanna to go to 50%, what, well, how long is that gonna take? And it's now saying it's gonna complete in 941, which is in 10 minutes time. We're up at 25 minutes now, 18.6 kilowatt hours delivered. What I did was as soon as I saw that increase in the car, that the miles per hour had increased, I came out, took a picture of the, uh, the unit to be able to work out the amount of kilowatt hours uh, that we had delivered in that time period to see the rate of charge, if you will, um, at that point. So what that basically worked at, out as in the last seven minutes, we have managed to hit 47.25 kilowatts so it just shows that once the battery was warmed up a little bit the battery percentage was a bit higher then the car was able to accept more from this unit and also I turned on the uh, the air conditioning to try and heat, heat the car up a bit and we're able to basically pull what we would expect so although this is a 50 kilowatt unit it's almost never going to be the case that you'll get all of that but um, you get pretty close so 47 is not too bad now if we were to work out the average for the whole charge so far we've got 26 minutes so let's do 19.4 divide that by 26 and times that by 60 we get an average so far of 44.77 so that's pretty good actually to be honest considering the weather is so cold now I know that many people will be saying that you know compared to the speed at which say a Tesla is going to charge or, or, or an Audi e-tron then this is much slower but Bear in mind, this is only a 50 kilowatt charger. But yeah, the Polestar is not the fastest charging car. That is something that I'll be 100% honest about. If you want a car that charges really, really quickly, then the Polestar is probably not the one to choose for you. 
How important is fast charging and the speed that you really get from the charger um, in the real world? Well, this is something that I think a lot of people discuss a lot. You see it on a lot of the Facebook pages, forums, and YouTube videos. There are cars that charge very, very quickly, like the Audi e-tron and the Tesla cars. Now, the Tesla Model 3 is known to charge really quickly, especially on the Tesla, Tesla network. And uh, this is important, I think, for a lot of drivers. If you do a lot of miles, um, then the speed that you'll be able to charge at can reduce your, your traveling time by quite a lot. So the Audi e-tron, for example, doesn't have the best range and it is the thirsty car, it uses a lot of energy. But when you get to a charger, especially if you're using a 150 kilowatt uh, unit, you will be able to charge very quickly because it will be able to sustain 150 kilowatt charging for uh, a good amount of time. Um, and the Tesla's the same. Obviously, there's there's steps down the charging curve quite significantly. But if you if you get the car down to a low battery percentage and then plug into one of their newer version Tesla superchargers, you'll be able to charge up quite quickly. And if you watch other people's videos, like Beyond Tesla Beyond's videos, you'll see that there are times when he can't even eat in time because the charger will actually penalize you for being plugged in. Now, that actually is kind of annoying. And uh, if you if you want to go somewhere and have something to eat and you plan your stops uh, accordingly, then you don't need to charge your car in 20 to 30 minutes because unless you're going to McDonald's or KFC or somewhere that does really fast food or a garage where you're grabbing a sandwich and then eating while you drive or something like that, which you probably shouldn't do anyway um, <laughs> these days, is uh, you are going to um, charge faster than you can, can actually eat. So I think um, the BP Pulse Network has come up with a good system where they put these 50 kilowatt chargers into locations where you might spend a little bit more time to eat. So here you've got 90 minutes before you'll get penalized. And uh, if you come and plug in with 10% or 20%, you can sit down and have a meal, which might take you an hour, an hour and 15, and uh, you'll, you'll be good to go when that meal is done. So it's really important to think about about how you're gonna use the car. If you're gonna charge mainly at home and just occasionally on the road, then uh, the Polestar is, is great. It's a fantastic car. Yes, it will charge on 150 kilowatt charges, but just bear in mind that, especially in the cold, you're not gonna get 150 kilowatts. I think the best I managed was 110, but that's still quick. So yeah, this is something to bear in mind. It's not the defining factor of a car. You can spend a little bit more time to take your time to eat, and uh, it might not make that much of a difference anyway. And it really comes down to how many times you expect to be using rapid charges um, during a week or a month. So charging speed slowed down a little bit there, 93 miles an hour, and we're reaching 50% now. So I'm going to get out and I'm gonna stop the charge, I think. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be enough for today. Okay, so let's go around to have a look at um, what the charging unit is saying now. So yeah, reaching 50% looks like it was almost exactly 31 minutes to do that. So let's take, um, yeah, 23.5 on the unit here. Divide that by 31 and times that by 60. We've managed an average of 45.5. So yeah, not too bad. That is a really good indication that you can um, you can charge in low temperatures on a 50 kilowatt charger using the Polestar and uh, it doesn't suffer too badly from any form of limitations from the cold. And uh, yeah, good experiment, I think. And from my previous experience with this, uh, if you keep charging up to about 80%, 50 kilowatts works, works fine. You don't really get much of a slowdown until you go past the 80% point. Okay, so time to end the charge and uh, it's as simple as pressing stop charge on the app. You don't even need to use the unit itself. It tells you the elapsed time and uh, there we go, message received. So it tells you your cable may unlock when the charge stops and you get a welcome back and it tells you what you have taken from the charger and then allows you to disconnect. So there we go. I don't know if I need to push the button. I pushed it anyway and uh, plug back in and that's finished. And just for fun, I'm going to try and do this again, but I'm going to try and use the AC charger. You can see there's an AC charger on the side there. I just want to see um, how that works. So uh, let's uh, go back into the app and select this location and uh, Swipe up there, click on that red line. So use this pulse point. Now I'm gonna say type two. I'm gonna click start charge. Okay, so let's um, grab the type two cable this time. 
plug that in and there it's told us that we're, we're hooked up to the type 2 okay so now it says it's doing safety checks so this this is something I thought that it might be worth trying because not that it's happened to me yet, but there is a possibility you could get to one of these and find that maybe the CCS doesn't work or there's, there's an issue with it. But um, you could always just then grab the AC charger and plug that in, see if that one works. Say the cable was damaged or something like that. It's possible it might do, and uh, that could be a backup plan. Now, obviously, these kinds of AC chargers can deliver quite a significant kilowatt uh, rating, but um, on the car, that's not going to be able to utilize that. So you'll, you'll get whatever you can get. The Polestar can can do uh, 11 kilowatts on AC charging. So yeah, if you do try the AC charger, this is, uh, I believe it's 43 kilowatts, but the, the car can only manage 11. So that's not gonna really give you a particularly fast charge, but let's have a look at the display. So it's showing uh, 21 miles per hour. It's uh, 16 amps at 227 volts on a three phase. Yeah, 21 miles per hour is uh, what you're gonna get. So if you found yourself in this position, it's worth giving it a try. So yeah, I think I'm done charging now. It was nice to try out the BP Pulse system. That works really, really well. And uh, it's a good app, actually. There was no lag. It worked um, the first time. I didn't have to try it before. Uh, I just simply connected up when we started doing this video. And it worked both times that I, I used it to charge. So yeah, in terms of charging speed on this 50 kilowatt charger, it seemed to work really well. And we got almost the 50 kilowatts charging uh, in terms of an average, all the way up to 50% and averaged out at about 45, which isn't too bad considering the temperature. And it just shows that, yeah, if it is cold, you can use a 50 kilowatt charger and you, you're not gonna see significant limitations even when the battery hasn't warmed up fully. Um, and also, yeah, if you, if you find yourself at one where the CCS doesn't work, but you still want to charge, then maybe you can use the, uh, the AC side. That seems to work absolutely fine as well. So yeah, I hope this uh, video has been helpful. And if you could like and subscribe down below, that would be great. And I'll see you again with another video very soon. Thank you.